Welcome back to Tonight Crossover. Man, I'm so excited about this NBA season. A lot of things are happening very early on. This segment is called What's Up in the NBA? You like, like that? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, whatever. Like so, Marky Mark, show us what topic, what should we talk about? What's, what's up in the NBA, for real? What is up in the NBA, right? Let's talk about first one of my favorite teams right now in the NBA, the Boston Celtics. Like, I want to know what are your thoughts with the NBA so far and how the Boston played has, are playing, really, because now they've won 10 straight games, right? Their wow. last win was against um, LA Lakers. LA, which was an amazing game. Amazing game. Like, they missed Tatum and Horford, but they still won double digits. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but, you know, they won against teams like Oklahoma City, San Antonio, and Milwaukee twice. So, they're playing really well. Not only that, but, you know, it's showing a lot of things that the, the identity of what a Boston team is right now. It's showing that maybe Kyrie can lead a team a winning team because people have always doubted him saying that maybe he can't lead a winning team because before LeBron was there, he was averaging 20 points a game, but he, he never had a winning team. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but they had young players right now that are playing exceptional, like, you know, Tatum, a 19-year-old rookie right now playing well, Jalen Brown with his development, smart. A lot of their young core are playing really up to, you know, stepping up their game be despite Gordon Hayward being injured. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts right now with the Boston Celtics? I think they're looking amazingly well. I think it's so, so crazy to see them do well without a key piece as Gordon Hayward. Exactly. It's crazy how they're gelling really well. I know their defense is amazing. Mm -hmm. and top, 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 five, top, top five. five. And most of their players are very defensive. And I think it also translated into Kyrie, his effort. And I don't think he's ever been known to be a defensive presence, but like mm -hmm. he's getting a lot of steals. He's more active on defense. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a you know a testament to the coaching staff, Brad Stevens. Maybe Brad Stevens is this do you genius. Think, do you think this justify how good of a coach Brad Stevens is to put mm -hmm. together a young team to to be led by someone that you know people thought he was an isolation player, but look at how well they play. Mm -hmm how they move the basketball and how much they play Kyrie off the ball a lot. Mm. Oh, well, uh, the highlights, a lot of what Kyrie did, like he, he, has, he has now highlights of very uh, various plays off the ball and on the ball. Do you see them running plays for him off the ball when, he's a, when they utilize him as a shooter mm -hmm. and as a decision maker? And then you see the, the highlight in LA that it's number one, the, where he dribbles past all oh the LA God. Laker players. <laughs> but I think Kyrie's becoming more flexible and he's that veteran that, that, that yeah, he is a leader, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, he really wanted to show that he can thrive without LeBron. And looking at the record so far, it looks like they're... they're I, it's still early, but like Boston's really gelling well, and there's so much potential with them. I'm kind of scared of them. I feel the same way, too. Mm. Do you feel like uh, Le, uh, the Cavaliers are missing Kyrie? Or, mm. the, or is it the other way around, and Kyrie's missing the, you know... I don't think Kyrie's I mean, not. I don't. <laughs> Kyrie's not missing Cleveland at no, all. At all, I, right? Well, the Lakers was it? Wait, he played. That was his first home game, right? It's, they lost the first two games. Boston lost mm. the first two games, mm. right? One was first game against Cleveland, mm. but since then they haven't lost the games. Mm. After that two games, I think they just composed themselves together and just literally took the world. Like no, everyone was surprised because everyone after the loss of Gordon Hayward, yeah. everybody thought that. They're done for the season. Mm -hmm. They're not making anywhere past, you know, the Cavs. Mm -hmm. You know, the season is lost maybe next year. But look at them winning 10 straight. Like, what do you think that says about the players or the coach or really just the culture in Boston? I think I think culture may play a big role mm -hmm. because it's when you think of Boston Celtics, you think of a winning caliber team. You think, mm -hmm. I just I'm I didn't know Kyrie would gel that quick. And I, I felt like it was going to be... I doubted, I yeah, doubted, I doubted his doubted ability it. to play defense. I doubted yeah. his ability to change. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm impressed that, you know, I'm impressed that he's able to step up and he's able to lead a team, a lead, a lead a winning team, mm -hmm. and be the focal point. And, and, and I want to see more of that, and I think they can continue it. But uh, speaking of another team that can, you know, go up against Cleveland, and let's talk about the newly acquired uh, Bledsoe right now that he was recently traded from Phoenix Suns, right? And they acquire him using Greg Monroe and a future first round and a second round pick. Mm. What do you feel this trade is going to do for the Milwaukee Bucks or for the East in general? Because there's been a lot of imbalance saying that West is stacked and East is garbage, except Ke Cleveland. Mm. What do you think this is gonna <laughs> do in the East and for the Bucks and potentially yeah. being the dark horse to basically face the Cavs or beat the Cavs? Mm. I like that. I like that you said um, the East is garbage. Right now, it's not. It's actually proven 
that the garbage is turning into something more spectacular to watch, to see Milwaukee, to see Boston, to see Cleveland. Like, it's... It's gonna be it's gonna be a great side to watch, you know, and especially with Bledsoe going into Milwaukee, I think it'll put less pressure on Giannis. Exactly. Brogdon will not have an uh, well. There's two sides, I guess. <laughs> Delvadova won't have a lot of playing time, <laughs> which is a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. I think Brogdon is yeah. a really perfect. Uh, it's a perfect role player to have against mm-hmm. ball dominant stars like Giannis yeah. and Bledsoe because the two of them really handle the basketball a lot. They have a lot of usage rate and they make a lot of plays with the basketball. Mm-hmm. And and how do you think it's gonna you know, not just the scoring, mm. but also do you think that the load wise in terms of having Giannis to always have to be there to create plays, what does that do for the Bucks like for Bledsoe? Do you think this is gonna be because he's he's still in his prime? What do you think he's gonna was what do you think of the impact that he's gonna make for the Bucks? He will no I I believe he will be an impact player like yeah. he averages like what 20, 27? 20 a game. Twenty a game. That's a, game a lot. That's a lot of um, pressure off Giannis and off people that uh, Middleton like if he if he can't get a shot going like there's a lot of people that will be relieved for his presence there whether it be mm-hmm. assists because he he makes a lot of assists too six yeah. six assists per game something. He's gonna like that. be a playmaker too. That mm-hmm. that now they have at least guys three four guys that can make plays for them. Mm-hmm. Besides Giannis, Milton, Brogdon, and him mm-hmm. on the floor, and I think that's just um, how do you f- how do you feel about it in terms of you know do you think this type of lineup can go against you know top teams like Boston mm-hmm. and Cleveland? What do you think are some of the advantages they'll have? Um, well, I, I kind of wanted to throw the back question to you because mm-hmm. Greg Monroe they lo- they lost their center yeah. now they have. Two mediocre centers, what maker? I know maker came from Canada. What, what? But like, I when you say go against Boston and Cleveland, like I feel like their centers will eat, like Milwaukee. Unless I don't know. That's what I think. I, I think Thon Maker like, can't guard anyone. I feel like they. And I feel, I feel like, like they <laughs> traded. I feel like they traded Bledsoe for. Yeah. They got Bledsoe for almost nothing because they were literally yeah. playing Monroe almost five six minutes a that's, game. Yeah, that's true. And 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 he was always been a liability defensively, mm-hmm. and they never really. He was using him. They were using him mostly for you know getting quick offense and getting down low, uh, getting post ups. Mm-hmm. But now that Giannis is improving game so much and he's scoring most of his basket inside, he's basically the post you know That's presence true. and inside presence. Mm-hmm. And I think that I I think they'll have a point when their lineup would be uh, Bledsoe, Brogdon, Middleton, Jabari when he's mm-hmm. back. Jab- yeah. And they're gonna play Giannis at the five. And I think. Yeah. That is the probably the scariest thing I can think of right now because Giannis can do so much. Mm-hmm. Imagine having a lineup like that where every single player can bring up the basketball. Every single player is athletic. Wingspan, Bledsoe. What's his wingspan? Do you know about he's, that? He's, I think, over 6'7". Six, 6'7", seven six, wingspan. 6'7", seven wingspan. Six, seven wingspan. Something's that's, happening. In that's Jason, <laughs> this is yeah. what I think Jason Kidd has been wanting to have. In terms of a starting lineup, in terms Some of super freaks. how he wants his... T- he wanted a positionless kind of basketball yeah. team, mm-hmm. and that's what he would. That's why he was big on the Michael Carter Williams, Tony Snell, you know Middleton, Giannis, and Brogdon. These are players that are six five, six four, mm. with six seven or more wingspan. These are players that can, you know, that have length and athleticism. That's why they were big on Maker too, mm-hmm. because not only was you know Maker seven, over seven feet, his wingspan is just you know outrageous. And I think this is what Jason's kid has been like having the vision in terms of what kind of basketball team he wanted to run and wanted to coach. Mm -hmm. And it's scary to think that if they gel together and Jabari comes back and he's healthy, hopefully Mm -hmm. lost all that weight, Mm -hmm. I think they are a scarier team to to face. You know, not, I don't think they're they're scarier than Boston. Ooh, that's a good, so so now it's about who's gonna, who's gonna take down Boston, who's gonna take down Cleveland? There's a lot. That, I mean, Washington, if they pull themselves together. It's going to be an interesting Toronto, conference over there. I, I think East is a little bit underrated. Yeah. People are just underrating, uh, underestimating how good the East, East teams are. 